to Gypsy Fade Creations. Just jumping into a soap making video here because I am very, very, very behind on the Brambleberry Floral Collection. Um, the last one that I've yet to make is with the Blushing Orchid. So I'm going to get started with that. And I wanted to do an ombre design in purple, of course. So let's get started. Achieved. Set this to the side and I'm going to do this whole entire batch in purple to begin with and then I'm gradually going to add the titanium dioxide to it. I'm using a orchid mica from Brambleberry because you know that makes sense with the fragrance. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to start by adding a little bit of titanium dioxide to it. And then I'm going to work in steps. I'm going to start with the first batch of it and add the fragrance and then pour. Let that set up. I'm going to do layers of purple mountain pour in between this as well. some of that up. Add a bit of the fragrance to it. This one is my all-time favorite from that collection. The other ones were okay, um, but this one was the best one, in my opinion. It is, um, has notes of lemon, lime, cucumber, tuberose, rose, clove, co coconut, balsam, and musk. And it is just the most intoxicating blend I could ever imagine in a floral. It's so good. It's one of those fragrances that I'm like, can I just roll in this and smell like this forever? I like it that much. All right, I am going to pour this in here. I don't have to scrape this bowl out completely because I'm going to be adding to it. I'll let that sit for a second and then I'm going to pour and split this in half and add some more titanium dioxide to it. Got a notif notification on my phone that a royalty soaps video was just re released. Katie is one of my favorite soap makers, and it take takes like everything in me to not just stop what I'm doing right now and watch hers. Like I could be making soap. I'm making soap right now, <laughs> but I want to watch hers. Add a little more. And then just to make sure that it's even, I'm going to add the rest of this one. This will be the lightest color. And I'm definitely taking a risk here with um, glycerin rivers because if you add titanium dioxide, it can happen. And the fact that this is getting pretty thick is, is a good thing. Like, if you want to do layers, you want things to get thick. So it's okay. Let's just clean this up a little bit. 
not going to add the fragrance to it yet. I'm going to wait till I'm ready to pour. Alright, I'm going to go get the melt and pour ready. I'm going to only start melting that down. I've just got a whole bunch of chunks in here. I'm going to use some Abathist Purple from Crafter's Choice. Alright, so I'm going to create some texture in the middle of these layers just by taking a spoon and making some indents in it. I didn't want clean cut layers in this one. Alright, that looks good. And then I'm going to take some mountain pour and just create a very thin layer. And maybe even some drops in there. Just like that. I'm going to want that to harden up real quick. Yes, you heard that right. That was the freezer. And then I'm going to add the fragrance to the second layer. And I'll just pour it in a third, but I won't mix it in. And now that I'm making the soap, I just realized that there's 2% vanilla in it. So, nothing I can do about it now. Except cross my fingers that things don't get too ugly. Darn it! Alright, now for the second layer. Just kind of going to put that over top of the spatula. I don't want to break the layer. On the bottom of the melt and pour. Scrape this guy out. hate myself right now. I think I do the research on fragrances when I buy them, but then when I go to use them, I forget to look at things like Vanillin content. 2% is not bad, right? I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. All right. Let's clean up this side a little bit. Give that a whack. Just trying to scrape this out as best as I can. And then I'm going to start mixing this guy. It's really thickening up. doing the same thing, just making some indents with titanium dioxide on the back of my spoon there. It's 
think it needs to sit a little longer. This isn't working. Hold up. All right, let's try that again. And then the melt and pour. the mica drizzles that I did on the amethyst soap with a combination of the drop swirl with the mountain pour that I did. It's kind of how I came up with the layers. I didn't want to do a mica line because I've, I've done that. <laughs> so trying a line of mountain pour and I'm sticking this into the freezer real quick. So my best friend just texted me and she's home baking. She's making, I think she said banana banana bread and she just texted me that she forgot to add the vanilla to the batter and I thought that's hilarious because I forgot there was vanilla in my batter <laughs> only I don't think her banana bread turning brown is going to make her upset <laughs> I'm gonna be a little mad if this doesn't turn out to be beautiful Whoops, I'm gonna give that a whack. I'm making a mess. All right, and I got some extra batter in here. I'm gonna go make some like little mini bars or something with it. And then I'll do the top of this. So I just got this little mold here that I like to keep around in case there are any instances like this where I have some leftover batter and I'll just make mini bars either I'll keep it for myself or give away to a friend and I think this leftover batter is because I added the melt and pour in there here except for the messes that I make and there we have it all right so for the top of this I lost my way oh there it is I have these cute little forget-me-not flowers that are dried and I got those from How to Look Pretty. I'll leave the link to them down below, but I just love the purple in that. And then I have this fork. And I think I'm just going to make a little wavy design on top. Hello. Without making too much. Mm. And then on the side here that looks awful is where I'm going to put the flowers.
Alright, so now give this a spray with the isopropyl alcohol. And I'll come back in 24 to 48 hours to cut it. <clears throat> okay, so far things aren't looking brown, which I'm thankful for. Hopefully it doesn't sit and then turn brown, but I wanted to show you the little a little bar I made with the extra soap. It matches, it's so cute. And I'm gonna try cutting this and not cutting the, the flowers off of them. Um, Cause I feel like they're going to get in the way a little bit. Let's just trim off the end here. See, look what they're doing. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm gonna try lining it on its side for this. I don't want it like it's making drag marks. That's not cool. Try this again. Oof. All right. See that little drag mark in there? But I'm still digging it. Let's keep going here. <clears throat> so I wanted to put a little shout out to another soaper on YouTube that I really like because I do watch a lot of other people's YouTube channels. If you make soap, I love it. I just can't get enough of it. I make it and I still like to watch it. And everyone is so talented. I don't care if you're, you know, a beginner or if you're an expert. I watch all soap videos. <laughs> but I wanted to put a shout out to Pink Dahlia Soaps because she made this taco dip soap that I was just so impressed with. And it, it perfectly resembled taco dip. It's the most realis realistic looking soap I have ever seen. And she did such a great job on that. Um, she also has like a pizza soap and a sushi soap over there too, so you go check her out. But I was curious because she said it actually smelled like taco. So I was like, where is she getting a taco fragrance from? And I always like trying new um, companies as well. So it was called Save On Scents. And I just got on the website and I just randomly clicked, I don't know, Novelty Scents, just to check it out. And I was a little shocked. <laughs> what they mean by novelty scents. Let me give you an idea here. We've got baby diaper. Resembles the smell of baby poo. Bacon, bacon applewood, bacon fried, bacon hickory smoked, bacon maple. Thank you, Luke. Baked potato, barbecue, basement, beef jerky, bleach, burnt rubber. A great rendition of the scent of warm rubber tires, reminiscent of the bicycle or motorcycle shop. Burnt wire, burnt, all kind of, like, who comes up with these things? These are real things. These are real soap fragrances or fragrances that you can buy, not just using soap, I'm sure, but that's what I think of. It's like, who wants to smell like this? It's, it's crazy. There's cement, there's Cheez-Its, there's Chlorine, there's coal, corn on the cob, corn pancakes, crayon wax, diesel, turpentine, the distinct smell of turpentine, drag strip. I think of something else when I think of drag strip. I don't know, what is that? The scent of burnt rubber or motor oil in a bottle, dusty attic, dusty carpet, exhaust. This can't be good. <laughs> I mean, I'm curious. I'm all down to making different soaps, but I don't know about these things. All right, I'm done reading. I just had to share that with you because I thought they were so unique. I didn't even know they existed. Anyway, fingers crossed this, this doesn't turn brown, but if you, you know, look at it now, it looks purple to me, and I'm quite happy with that. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for lots of fun soap making videos. Any questions or comments, you can leave them in the description box down below. And until next time, guys. 
Smell you later.